This, my friends, is a tenon saw, or a back saw to some people. It is used for joinery work and, as the name suggests, it is a key tool in creating nice straight tenons. If you don't recall, a tenon is a square wooden part of a joint that is made to fit into a matching square hole called a mortise. The tenon saw is special in that it has a stiff, reinforced spine that ensures that the blade will not flex and potentially ruin a piece that may have had several hours of work already put into it. It basically just ensures a nice, straight, even cut. Spear and Jackson started out as Spear and Love in 1760, working out in Sheffield, England. If you have seen any of my other videos, Sheffield was a popular location for tooling companies and industries, especially those revolving around steel. By 1830, the Spear and Jackson name came around after the company was handed down to Alexander Spear's nephew, John Spear, whom took on an apprentice named Sam Jackson. You can see where things went from there. As with many of these companies that are still around today, they have been bought and sold and now fall under larger company naming. The same applies to Spear & Jackson, or these days, Spear & Jackson Group, which owns companies such as Eclipse, Robert Sorby, Moore & Wright, and Bowers, as well as many, many more. When sanding, I made sure to stay well away from the teeth. They are already set, which is basically every second tooth is either bent left or right, so I wanted to leave that on there. If I got too close while sanding it, I would have taken some of the corners off the teeth. As I have cleaned the blade, I realized that to adequately remove all the pitting from the rust, I would have to take away a lot of material. To help it be less of an issue, I decided to try a brushed finish using a type of flapper wheel in a handheld drill to give the steel a, a grain. Under the microscope, which you can see in the top left corner, you can see how the surface should look. This was taken from the area directly underneath the handle, which had very little rust and pitting. The rust in the pits shouldn't be an issue if maintenance is kept up, but you can see that they look kind of gross. I'm lucky I noticed this now. The blade is actually slightly curved. A little bit of gentle persuasion on an anvil sorts it out though. One steady is the key so that you don't bend it too far in the other direction and spend more time on it. As much as I would like to keep these for the originality, they're made of aluminium and quite frankly they suck. The threads are worn and the light plating on top is ruined. So I harvested some full brass nuts from a franken saw, which is basically a saw that's made up of lots of different pieces, that I had hiding in my tool pile. As nice as the stamp nuts look, this is no warranted superior saw, so I'll only keep the plain ones. Now I pulled this piece of timber off completely. I would rather know that I had good coverage instead of trying to jam a little glue inside of a crack in a piece of wood. At the end of the day, it's just another battle scar on the surface.
Don't be afraid to give it a good test. You'd rather it break now than later on after you've put the finish on. I didn't know how to save this part, so I left it as is. I could have tried to sand the little bits near it, but I didn't want to risk scraping the text away. This is the top part of a steel piece that runs through the grip of the handle, or Spear and Jackson's patented non-brake handle. It also helps me date the piece, as they stopped making these handles in the early 70s. I ran a test with some water-based stain and decided that I liked the look of the plain shellac better. The wood grain in this piece looks really good, so a nice clear finish will just keep everything looking original. Here we can see the before and after of me filing the teeth down on this saw. Now, I am no way an expert on this. If you really want some good information, look up Paul Sellers' video on the topic. At the end of the day, I get the job done. By looking at these videos I've taken with my microscope, I could actually see how well I did. The pitting is still very obvious, but the end results speak for themselves. You can also very clearly see the set of the teeth, which is that every second tooth is bent either left or right, which gives a slightly wider cut than the thickness of the blade. I gave everything a quick clean with some metho to get any oil that I had on the surface off, and then I used some paste wax to protect the surface from rusting again. This was recommended to me by somebody in my plane video that I made recently, and this stuff seems to work really great. And now to see how well it works. Keeping in mind that that vise is not clamped to the table, it's actually cutting pretty well, otherwise we would just be pushing the piece all over the place. I made sure to test it on both a rip and a cross cut, which is basically either cutting with or against the grain, and it works really, really well. I may need to tighten up the set of the teeth to bring them closer together and give just a slightly smoother cut, but overall this is great for what I use it for. There we go, all finished. Would you have done anything differently? If so, let me know in the comments because I get some really great ideas from you guys. And as always, we'll catch you next time.